رب اشرح لي صدري وسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the windy city the city of flight delays and weird weather and it was there was snow on the ground 2 days ago and today most of the place it's all melted so that's that's Chicago for you and also welcome to the 15th annual Masikna convention we're so happy to have you all here today I'll announce again, as I did a few minutes ago, if there's anyone that needs sign language interpretation, please make your way to the front, as we do have an interpreter, inshallah, and we would like you to be able to avail the service and enjoy the session. My name is Juhi Taher. I'm the executive director of Mossin. Mossin is an organization formed for advocacy for people with all forms of disability in our community. It's a place where we are working on welcoming people, on awareness, accommodation, and acceptance. It's been founded by Sheikh Omar Suleiman. I represent a team of people here at the convention who you will see over the next three days, inshallah. A few minutes ago, I was on the ground in the childcare room, playing with children who have special needs. We also have wheelchair assistance, assistance for the deaf, for the blind, for people with cognitive disability, visible, invisible, but alhamdulillah, with the partnership of Masikna, Mossin has been able to now serve this community. So we're thrilled. And it really ties in very well with the concept of inclusion, acceptance, belonging. And we're going to talk a lot about that in the session today. Um, I want to tell you that I'm so excited to introduce some of my favorite scholars, speakers, uh, here today. I know they're yours also, and we're really truly blessed to have them all, and I want to thank them. We have Aslada Yasmi Magahid, an instructor for Al Maghrib Institute. She's an author, an international speaker, who has been a support to us from the initial launch of Mosin. And she brings her wise words and her comforting, calm reconnection that she teaches all of us in all of our lives. Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda is the founder and director of Khalam Institute and an instructor with Bayana Institute also. And we're so proud to have recently partnered also with Qalam. Um, they have been offering special accommodations uh, for their students of deen. And that's really a first for an institute of this kind, mashallah, to give access to all community members. And we have our special guest, um, Brother Baba Ali. And uh, he's a comedian, as you know. He's a YouTube sensation. And he's the founder of HalfOurDeen.com. And he's yet another a partner of ours at Mohsin um, with uh, just a beautiful collaboration that you're going to hear a little bit more about today. So Bismillah ar I'm going to take a few minutes before our esteemed speakers here. And I just want to share a few thoughts. None of you has faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Let's really ponder this and reflect upon this for just a moment. So as we start our day, each of us, we, we make dua, we pray. We pray for our protection, our safety, blessings in all of our efforts throughout the day, and the well-being of society at, at large, and the suffering of people all around us. What is the meaning of this that we pray for, and how do we apply it? None of you has faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. I want to take you to a very familiar scenario in many of your communities, perhaps in your masajid. And I want you to start thinking about these people that I'm sure you've seen and I'm going to describe for you. So there's that elderly uncle, the amma, the grandpa that you see who sits in his chair every single Friday at Jama. And where has he been all week long? Do we see him? Do we know about his family? Who lives with him? Are we as a community serving his needs? And are we thinking about him and including him? What more can we provide to him besides that chair at Jama'ah and a place to pray? Now let's think about the new Muslim, the revert brother or sister, that everyone meets and greets so warmly. He attends all the programs. He tries to help out wherever he can. He's the guy who's sweeping, cleaning. He's picking up. He's arranging chairs. He's handing out lunch. Do we see him outside the masjid? Is he invited to our social gatherings? Do we know about his family? And who does he turn to when he has challenges and trials? What more can we provide him, our brother? And we also have the often forgotten 600,000 Muslims with disabilities living in our communities. How many of us have seen them? 
How many people here know someone with a disability? Any form of disability? <coughs> well, are they visible? Are they invisible? Do they come to the masjid? Oftentimes when you look at a family situation, it's the father, the father you see. He runs to Salah and then you know what? He runs back home. He rushes out the door to his family that's falling apart each day. The sibling of an individual with special needs who tries really hard to engage in the youth, but that, that child, that youth, their life is so different than anybody else's. No one can relate. They have really big challenges. Oftentimes they miss events, they run out of events, they leave early. And then, are these masjid events really catered to providing for these people? And the one who's left at home caring for the loved one, they're exhausted, they're concerned. Not only that, they're stared at, and they're never quite understood. What more can we provide them? As I've walked you through just these few examples, the elderly, the revert, the disabled, you can see a common theme, I hope. The need for belonging and acceptance. If we put ourselves in those shoes for just one moment, I ask you to try to see how it feels. It's almost like an outsider looking in. But it surely is that way in so many communities. And what would our Prophet ﷺ have done in each of these cases? Just think about that for a moment and I'm gonna let our esteemed speakers address some of that. The Muslims are like a single man. If the eye is afflicted, if the head is afflicted, then the whole body is afflicted. He who relieves the hardship of a believer in this world, Allah will relieve his hardship on the day of judgment. He who makes easy what is difficult, Allah will make it easy for him in the world and the hereafter. And he who conceals the faults of a Muslim, Allah will conceal his faults in the world and the hereafter. For Allah helps the servant as long as he helps his brother. As long as he helps his brother. My dear brothers and sisters, we're applying this guidance from our beloved Prophet ﷺ. Just some of the time, just when it's easy, are we applying it? Are we stopping and asking what is our Islamic duty in creating these welcoming places? As I work with Muslim, I very much, I very often hear, oh, the government takes care of people like that. Oh, oh, we don't have any of those people in our communities with disabilities. But who knows someone? Let's stop and check our own selves and see what we can do. And our Prophet ﷺ, the best role model to mankind often would stop. He would be in the masjid, وسلم, he would ask about people if he didn't see them there. He would, in the morning meetings, in the halakhas, he would say, where is that person? He would check in on them, he would visit them when they were sick, or someone who was compromised. And he would counsel those who needed advice, and he would befriend those that others would ignore. May we learn about this role model society and reflect upon our own civic obligations, and let's build that diverse, community of tolerance and let's take from those differing minds and differing abilities there's a lot to offer there in diversity there's beauty and there is strength and that's straight from Maya, Maya Angelou I want to tell you that we have started programs across the country as I wrap up here and we have created special needs classrooms for children with disabilities and even up to adult ages and the diversity that these beautiful individuals bring to the communities, the volunteers are learning from it, the teachers are learning from it and they see the contribution that these community members can bring. So. Let's not disregard them. We all have a role to play. Let's think about this today and how we can reach out and create belonging and acceptance. And as for those who strive in our path, we will surely guide them in our ways. And indeed, Allah is with those who are of service to others, the doers of good, the muhsineen. Surah Ankabut. Jazakallah khair for your attention to this topic. Now I will let the rest of my panel.